Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is going to be my tips to learning medical terminology. Now, if you're new to my show, uh, I am Blue. I'm a medical coder. Um, and I have my channel to share my experiences and some of the things that I know about medical coding and obviously medical terminology. <laughs> um, but I hope that if it, this video has helped you, that you will take a moment to uh, like and share and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so um, medical terminology is made up of Greek and Latin words, okay? Um, and to really fully understand all of these words, it's important to know the prefixes, the root words, and the suffixes, okay? Uh, I have a whiteboard that I wrote out, and I will be taking a picture of this whiteboard because I was trying to film earlier when there was better lighting. However, uh, this was a day to cut the grass <laughs> outside, so it was very loud and I could not film earlier. Um, but I do want to show you guys how I broke down the words, uh, so this way it will, hopefully it will help you. Um, when you're trying to learn medical terminology, whether you are going to be a new medical coder or whether you are a veteran medical coder and you just want to brush up or somebody in the healthcare field, uh, it's important not to get overwhelmed with the enormity of this task. I always say that if you use your context clues, if you use um, little pieces of the word or the phrase or whatever, it will help you to better understand what it is that you are looking at. Because having a very strong medical uh, terminology vocabulary is so huge. Um, and to really understand and make you more efficient when you are medical coding, it is important that you understand what you're reading. And don't be afraid to look up stuff in, in the dictionary or even online to find out what that particular word means if you are lost on something, okay? There is nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no shame in it. Uh, it's better that you know and understand rather than just, um, you know, look over it and, and not really take it seriously, okay? Um, but yes, medical terminology is made up of Latin and Greek words. Uh, so that's why I say learn the prefixes, the root words, and the suffixes. Uh, on the uh, whiteboard that I'm going to show you guys uh, in the picture, um, I broke down several words, like five different words. And because of this, I'm showing you guys how I'm able to look at a word and really understand what it means. Like myalgia, right? Which means, myalgia means muscle pain. But if you broke down the word into algia, which is the uh, suffix of this word, right? Algia means pain. My or myo means muscle. You're referring to the muscle, okay? That would be myalgia, which means muscle pain, okay? Um, you ever hear of fibromyalgia? It's the same thing. It's just, it's the algia, right? You know that it is referring to that. It is referring to this, or it is referring to whatever the condition is, but that condition equals pain, okay? The other word that I had broke down was uh, chondromalacia, which is a softening of the cartilage. Now, how do we know this? Because chondro refer, refers, refers, <laughs> refers to cartilage. And um, uh, malacia refers to softening. So we know that this is softening cartilage, right? Because cartilage is supposed to be hard, okay? Um, and then you have pancreatitis. So I broke down that pancreatitis. Pancrea is obviously referring to the pancreas. And itis is referring to inflammation. So you have an inflammation of the pancreas, that is pancreatitis, okay? Um, and then I was going to show you guys the word for um, otorhinolaryngeology, which was the word that the, um, he was the recruiter for the medical coding school that I went to. No. He was one of one of the uh, medical coding schools that I had interviewed with. He wrote down this word, otorhinolaryngeology, and he's like, well, what does that word mean? And I'm like, and, and keep in mind, I had not been in, in medical terminology at all. Uh, I was so far away from the medical field 
<laughs> it was not even funny. Uh, I was supposed to go to law school. <laughs> I was not supposed to go into the medical field at all. Um, of course, I went into um, the health information field, uh, being a coder, but um, I was so far away from it, it wasn't even funny. But I knew the bro the breakdown of the words, right? Because I am a reader. And you don't necessarily have to be a reader, but this being a reader did help me, okay? Uh, again, I was preparing myself for law school. That's what I was doing. So uh, I broke it down, on the, and you'll see on the whiteboard. Auto, which is referring to the ears. O-T-O -O refers to the ears. Um, and then you have rhino, which of course is the nose. Now, whenever I think of the nose and I think of rhino, I think of a rhinoceros because that is predominantly what you see on a rhinoceros is their nose, okay? Um, and then you have laryngeo, right? Which is referring to the larynx. That's the throat area. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's the throat area, okay? So, and then you have ology, which is the study of, okay? That's what that word means or that's what that uh, suffix means. So when you put it all together, it is the study of the ears, the nose, and the throat, okay? So <laughs> that's a good way to be able to break things down. It doesn't hurt to be able to break things down so that you can better understand it, okay? Uh, and then the last one was um, cholelithiasis, which uh, if, you, if you break down the word, okay, uh, choli is referring to the bile or the gall, okay? And then you have um, lith or litho, which is referring to a stone or calculus, Okay, and then you have iasis, which is an abnormal condition. So we know by looking at the word uh, cholelithiasis that this is an abnormal condition because it is referring to a stone that is in the gall bladder. Okay, now if you've ever had this, I had this issue. Uh, I did have to have my gall bladder removed a few years ago. Uh, it is not fun, <laughs> uh, but gallstones are common in people, okay? Um, but cholelithiasis is referring to a stone that is in the gallbladder, okay? Um, yes, that is what that means. Uh, but yes, um, I, I was looking to see if I had any other notes. <laughs> um, when you are learning the prefixes and suffixes, it may be a little daunting. And I... Like I said, I'm going to include that um, list of prefixes and suffixes that I used uh, for the prep for this show. I'm including that link and I want to encourage you guys. Now, yes, I am a huge advocate for flashcards. However, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Uh, <laughs> that is a lot. That is a lot of flashcards. If you want, if you are better with hearing, right? In, in hearing, like learning, to, like audio learning, uh, what I would suggest that you do is on your phone, record yourself saying each of those prefixes or suffixes and what it means, okay? And this way you have a recording. Now, the list can take maybe sometimes three minutes, uh, depending, uh, the A list is really huge. Other lists of other letters is really a lot smaller. Um, I went through the S list in like a minute and a half or something like almost two minutes. Uh, so that way you guys can have that recording and then listen to it. And then that way you can, um, you don't have to write anything, but you can just listen to it and you'll know, uh, what, what that prefix or that, what that suffix means. Now I would suggest that you break it down into like seven letters in a month, work the first seven letters, second and then so on and so forth till you get to the end and you, of course you run out. Um, but this way you can just break it down and you'll be done in four months. I mean, you'll, you'll know um, all of the prefixes and suffixes of the alphabet from this list. And this list is pretty comprehensive, guys. So that's why I recommend this one. Uh, this is not an ad for them, but, <laughs> but this was a really good list. So, um, but if you take the time and you record yourself and then just, Turn it on when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, and that way you can just listen to it. Okay, um, that way you can when you're when you're listening to it, you don't necessarily have to look at anything because after a while, when you are studying, your eyes do get tired. Yes, I know, <laughs> and your hand gets tired from writing all the flashcards. 
Uh, but I wanted to give you guys an alternative to doing flashcards. This way you can commit it to memory by just listening to it. And these, I mean, it'll, like I said, it'll be like a minute, minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Um, just reading it, just reading straight from the list. And that way you can have it and you can start to remember it and you can start to expose your mind and your brain to it. Okay. Uh, but the most important thing is to not panic. Don't panic. You, you, you guys, you have to know that when like doctors, they had to have years of years of schooling. Do you think they memorized every single bone in the body and, and every single medical terminology word their first year? Heck no. They memorized a lot, yes, but they had to work at it and they still have to work at it. They go to school for 10 years, uh, roughly, you know, and that, I mean, that's a, that's a average, you know, some go for longer, some go for 15 years, uh, but they spend all that time learning. We are merely lay people. <laughs> um, and most of us as medical coders have our high school diploma or a GED. And so because of that, you know, it's, Obviously, yes, we have to work a little bit harder because we're a little bit behind the bell curve when it comes to learning things. I mean, doctors, you usually know in the early 20s, you know, I <laughs> I was in my late 20s uh, when I started and I've known people who were in their 60s. I knew a lady that was in her 60s uh, that went to medical coding school and she had to learn all that stuff. So and she made it. She's still a coder and she's in her 70s. So that's just something to consider. You're never too old if, if that's your hang up. Um, you're never too old to learn. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, but it is going to take some commitment. It's not something that you can learn overnight and you should not get after yourself uh, if you can't pick it up right away. Okay. Just break it down. And like I said, work with seven letters in a month and then move on to the next seven letters and then move on to the next seven letters. And by the time you know it, you're going to be a whiz. Because you, you know that good foundation. You know the foundation of, of, you know, the prefixes and suffixes and things like that. And after a while, then it'll be easier for you to pick up, you know, the bones in the body and all the muscles and, you know, the, all the nerves and things like that. It will get easier for you. Uh, but don't try to force yourself to memorize because that is the quickest way to burn yourself out. Okay. And then sort of confirm that you feel like you, if you, if you feel like you can't do it, it's going to confirm that if you try to burn yourself out saying, oh, I've got to do all these flashcards and I've got to do all of these things and I've got to study for hours on end. No, no, <laughs> do not study for hours on end without giving yourself intermittent breaks. Okay. Uh, I, I really do recommend studying for one hour and giving yourself a 10 minute break or a 15 minute break per hour, per, per one hour. So that way you're not like, you know, making yourself tired or burning yourself out uh, because it is a marathon, not a sprint. You guys have to know that is it is a lot to learn. Yes. Um, but when you're learning medical terminology, the better your foundation is, the the easier it's going to be. OK, now there are also a lot of videos on YouTube about medical terminology and a lot of them are like really nice. Um, I'm not going to um, link them on here because you guys can do the research and you can type in uh, medical terminology and there's going to be a lot of them that pop up. OK, so just take the time to uh, look at those ones. There's uh, YouTubers out there, obviously, that are much more advanced than I <laughs> when it comes to doing the uh, art on the um, in the frames or whatever, whatever. <laughs> uh, but there are people that can do that have done wonderful videos, very pretty and like a lot of color and things like that. So if that helps you to learn, you know what I mean? All, by all means, go for it. Um, there are apps out there don't ask me because I do not use apps I only use flashcards I am old school okay <laughs> uh, yes there were uh, smartphones back then but our smartphones back then a little over 10 years ago were not the smartphones of today okay so if you you feel confused because <laughs> you don't know what I mean trust me uh, a little over 10 years ago phones were not the same I'm just saying but there's a lot of apps out there uh, that you can go on and that will help you to train you uh, how to do these things. But like I said, 
if you want to look at it, look at it, uh, like do those flip ones on your phone. Uh, I really do recommend handwriting them out. However, I know it's a lot. So I also recommend talking it on your phone and recording it. So that way later on, you can just play it back and you can play it back in the middle of commercials. You can play it back when you, when you're about to go to sleep, you can play it back. Um, that way you can go to sleep listening to it and it'll be in your head. Um, and the recording will stop. I mean, obviously it'll stop whenever it's done a little video clip. Um, but that way you can just sort of keep listening to it. Um, and then if you give yourself time to learn it and get on a schedule to learn and like I said, break it down in, in a, in a span of four months. Yeah. You can go through the first seven letters, the second seven letters, and then so on and so forth. And then you're done in a little less than four months. And you've gone through all of the prefixes and suffixes. And, you know, there's no stopping you once you understand fully what those things mean. Okay. Because then you can um, start to pair those with like the root of the word. So you can really look at the root and figure out what they're trying to say. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that was how I learned. And a lot of the um, a lot of the websites that I looked at for other research to try to see if there was other things that I could bring to you guys. Um, they said that a lot of the same thing. You just have to be patient with yourself and um, writing those flashcards out would really help. But like I said, if you want to do it on the record, that's even better, too, because then you can then you literally have no excuse because you don't have to do anything. You just have to listen. OK. Uh, but yes, check out those uh, those different um, YouTubers that they talk about medical terminology. Some get really in depth into it. Uh, like I said, I will not um, recommend any other ones because you guys can do the research. OK, <laughs> so uh, I will go ahead and uh, finish it up for that one for today. But uh, I did get um, another quiz uploaded to my Patreon channel. So the Patreon channel is going to have the quizzes. And um, if you're interested in subscribing to Patreon, I would really appreciate it. It is, um, I have my pledges that start out at $1 per month. And it gives you access to all of the videos that I post, plus the quizzes, plus the critical thinking. Um, I did include a, what is it? A crossword, not a word search. <laughs> a crossword puzzle um, also on there as well. And so I talk about the rationale and things like that. So if you're interested, um, I do have the level start at $1 and the higher the level, um, the, I do have some that are for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. It includes uh, like an hour. And then the more you go up, it includes more time of tutoring. So if you need that one-on-one -on -one tutoring time, um, just be sure to check out my Patreon. I'll leave the link to my Patreon channel down in the description box below. So I will go ahead and close this one up, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Tomorrow is Q&A Tuesday, so if you have any questions, you can still submit them there. Um, but if you have anything else, let me know. And if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all on the next video. Bye!